Hi, I'm Jim Wertz. I'm here today with County Controller Kyle Faust, who's on your ballot this November uh, for re-election. Kyle, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, thank you. For the folks at home that don't know you, I think that, that will be a narrow part <laughs> of the audience, but for the folks at home that don't know you, uh, let's talk about what brought you into county government. Well, I'm a lifelong Erie County resident. I'm a lifelong Harbor Creek resident. And I was fortunate to have a father who was very active in politics uh, and taught American history and government at uh, Harbor Creek High School. Uh, so we were always in tune with every election season. It was like the seventh game of the World Series. It was like the Super Bowl for us. It was a big day. Uh, and so he was a committee man for a long time, served as the chairman of the party. Uh, and then he served for 12 years on Erie County Council, and I helped him with his campaigns at the level I could as a teenager anyway, uh, and saw him uh, help our community make very important decisions, bringing the ballpark uh, downtown, uh, uh, state-of-the-art library on the Bayfront, uh, and really help advance this uh, community forward. And he had a lot of pride. He was a lifelong uh, city resident himself, or I should say Erie County resident, moved to Harbor Creek after he got his teaching uh, position. Uh, but he took a lot of pride in what he did uh, to help this community. And he's all, always instilled a, a sense of, uh, of pride in Erie and Erie County and all of uh, his eight children. Uh, and uh, I always kind of had the sense that I would eventually run for office someday. I wasn't sure which one, I wasn't sure when, but I wanted to make that kind of impact if I could. Uh, and so uh, 20 years ago now, it's amazing how time flies, uh, I decided to run for county council. I was fortunate enough to win. I was fortunate enough to get reelected three times and serve for 16 years on that body. Enjoyed uh, not every minute, but just about every minute. Uh, and four years ago, I wanted to make a little bit bigger, more of a day-to-day -day impact on county government. I was a little dismayed at the way that the, uh, the office of the controller was being handled as we interacted with him on council. I felt I could do a better job. And uh, so I ran four years ago and the voters of Erie County saw it that way. Now, even though you ran for office uh, for county council and you ran for office for this job four mm -hmm. years ago, you don't see your work as political. Uh, talk a little bit about the lens with which you view the, the role of the county controller. Yeah, I think that's really the most important thing is to be independent, to be nonpartisan. Obviously, you're running on a partisan ballot. I'm a, I'm a Democrat. Uh, but when the election is over, I've taken a lot of pride, and this is something I learned from my father, that you're there to work for the community. You're there to work with Democrats and Republicans. You're there to work for people who voted or uh, didn't vote or didn't vote for you or voted for you. Um, and I think that's very important. And I have treated both the Democrat administrations before, the Dull Camper administration and the current Davis administration, exactly the same with the professionalism that, they, uh, that the office uh, demands and deserves. And I've reinforced that with my staff. And I think I have a pretty good track record of that. Track record of that. When I was on council, I had issues at times with my Democratic colleagues, and I was outspoken enough to say, I don't think that's right. I think we got to go in a different direction. Uh, and at times, obviously, as you tend to, you agree with the uh, members of your uh, opposing party. Uh, but I, you know, I never felt like service was uh, to get partisan advantage, and at the controller's office especially. And I'm, f I think I'm fortunate in this regard. One of the things I can offer the people of Erie County is that uh, I don't have any kind of relationship with the county executive. Uh, even though I've not been off of council for four years, there's only one left, Andre Horton, who was still on the body when I served. And because he's term limited in two, two years, he's going to be off of council anyway. Uh, so I have a, a pretty fresh approach and a pretty uh, free approach to be able to, to not worry about hurting friends, feelings, et cetera, something like that. I can approach the job uh, with the, uh, the attention that the voters and the taxpayers deserve. Now, I've heard you say before that you... Uh, you believe this job in your office has a, a, a customer service orientation to it um, and that there is a lot of interaction with folks in county government as a result of that customer service approach. Right. Can you talk a little bit about how you do that? Yeah, you know, because the controller's job really is more of an internal job rather than like on council. I affected county policy and the day-to-day -day lives of people on a much greater basis because they were the ones that, that uh, approved the policy in the end. The controller's office, I, I kind of kiddingly say that it's a lot like the assistant principal in high school. Nobody really loves seeing the controller walk through the door, but they are a necessary job in, in county government. And we are there to help employees 
if they make mistakes, if they make errors, or there are omissions and things, to get that corrected so that it doesn't happen uh, the next time. Uh, we're, not there, we're not there to persecute them, not there to punish them, not there to embarrass them. We want county government to work as efficiently as possible. Uh, and I think they really appreciate that, and I think that's why the credibility of the office is probably as high as it's been in quite some time. They realize that if they make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. It's going to get corrected. Uh, and we're also very fortunate. Erie County government has a very strong workforce. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to uh, interact with uh, the employees of, of Erie County, uh, as well as the elected officials, the department heads, et cetera, you know, the rank and file. I think we're very fortunate. Uh, with the, the staff that we have at the courthouse and throughout county government. But in like any operation, sometimes things don't go according to plan. The controller's office there is to help guide uh, in, in audit and correct whatever mistakes may have been made so they're not uh, repeated. And I think we do a pretty good job of that. Now, if voters are looking at your first term in office, what are some of the things that you've tackled, some of the accomplishments you've had that you feel most strongly about that you'd like voters to know? Well, I, I, the big thing it really is that independence. You know, if, 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 you're, if you don't have the integrity and the trustworthiness for people of all stripes to uh, trust what you're saying and what you're doing, that's very difficult. Uh, and I think probably the best example of that just happened late this summer. Uh, we were asked by council on a seven to nothing vote, which does not happen too often in county government these days, certainly on anything that isn't routine and mundane, to do an audit of about five different departments. Council just felt they don't have an accountant right now, they don't have a financial advisor. They could use an independent third party that gives them uh, an overview of those particular departments. That's something that never would have happened when I was on council because there wasn't enough trust between the controller's office and county council at that time to we would not have felt we would have gotten an, an honest, independent review of the finances that we were looking at. And so I took a lot of pride in the fact that we were asked, we're still in the midst of that audit, because uh, we obviously have, uh, we don't have, we weren't given extra staff, and I'm not asking for it. Um, we have to do our regular jobs uh, at the same time, uh, but we're gonna present at the council here shortly. Uh, and I, I took a great pride in that. That, that. that trustworthiness, that independence is extremely, uh, is extremely vital to how the, the controller's office works. And I've changed how the report is, re we have to do an annual report, I've changed how that's presented where I think it's much more readable and we uh, go over all the, uh, the uh, re, uh, whatever we notice uh, as we do the, re uh, the report through the first three months of the year. Uh, we work very closely with the departments, we've worked with HR to refine some HR procedures uh, so that money in the end is saved and not wasted. You, uh, as a county council member, uh, and now as a controller, have been involved in the county's pension fund. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about what you see as the controller's role with the pension fund, uh, and, and what you think the status of that fund is today, pensions being a, a right. major issue in American politics. Well, I, and I, that's really one of the pride points I think Erie County ought to have. We are one of the uh, best-run pension plans not only in the state, but in the United States, we rank uh, quite high. Uh, I've been served on, I have served on the Erie County Retirement Board and also the Pleasant Ridge Retirement Board for 12 of the last 18 years. So going back to when I first served, the funds in total, which represent about $360 million of assets under management at this time, that has basically doubled since I first started. Uh, last year was a tough year. Everybody's pension plans took a hit because the market is just not performing as we'd wish. That has continued to somewhat into 2023, but not nearly as bad. But to give you an example of the type of leadership that I've helped provide and the, and the retirement board in general has provided, um, last year the stock market was off by about 12%. Uh, we beat almost every pension plan out there, uh, and uh, so our performance was very strong. But we've also made some very important uh, alternative investments into private equity, private real estate. Those investments are up five to nine percent. So instead of keeping all that money in the stock market, stock market, which is sub subject to the whims of the ups and downs of the market, uh, we are able to shield part of our funds away. So we've been able to grow a little bit better than most pension plans, and we are always well funded. Obviously, when the market goes down, that takes a little bit of a hit. But once it rebounds, we're up. We, we have routinely been funded over 95%, if not 100%, over the years. Uh, so I'm, that's something I take a lot of pride in because that is not an additional financial drag on Erie County taxpayers, as many pension plans are, not only in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania but throughout the country. 
November 7th, uh, the last day to vote. Many people are already voting early here in Erie County. Um, with just a, a few minutes to go here in, in our discussion, uh, what do you want the Erie County voters to know when they walk in uh, and cast their ballot for Kyle Faust? Well, that, the one is the, that notion of independence, that they know they can count on me to do the controller's job as the Home Rule Charter uh, really demands that it does. And that is, they're not aligned with the county executive, they're not aligned with uh, county council, they're, they are there to audit county funds and serve on the retirement board and make sure that the county's tax dollars are properly spent. I think that uh, you have to have a lot of respect, and I think I've gained that because I've, I've given a fresh approach uh, where people know we are there uh, just to uh, make sure that county funds are properly spent and that we will report it properly uh, uh, if they are not. And the other thing is experience. I think a lot of people have noticed that county government is in a bit of upheaval right now and a little bit of uncertainty. And I think a lot of that has to do with inexperience where my 20 years of experience I think is needed now as much as ever. Because one of the things that it does is it helps save time and money because as a 20 year veteran of county government, when we get fraud reports or we uh, find an issue that we need to comment on, uh, especially in the fraud reports, we, we don't get pulled down rabbit holes. In the, the first couple years, especially when I was uh, on the job, we got fraud reports that you could tell that they were inclined to embarrass another political candidate. Now, we didn't ignore those complaints. We did our due diligence, but we made sure that politics was kept out of it. And that takes uh, experience and a little bit of spine. And I think I have a proven track record that I, can, that I can approach the job that way. And that's the way I'm going to continue to do it in the next four years. Well, voters have an opportunity to uh, vote early by mail or to go into the election office in the Erie County Courthouse. Uh, uh, and, and vote in person early or head to your polling place on November 7th. Kyle Faust, thanks so much for your time Jim, today. Jim, thank you. I appreciate it.